Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the Pan-Asian Destroyer line. This is the Republic of China, aka Taiwan's Shenyang. And the Shenyang, uh, we have a really brief history here to go over. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of information available on the ship, but basically the Shenyang was the Minikaze class destroyer Namikaze that was given over to the Republic of China, or Taiwan, as a prize of war in 1947 after being given to the United States as a prize of war. And we'll cover that a little bit more in the service history. Uh, she's named after the city of Shenyang in the northeastern part of China. Now let's talk about that service history. During World War II, Namikaze was converted into a Kaiten carrier due to the damages sustained by a torpedo from a U.S. submarine. During this change, she had three of her guns removed, as well as all of her torpedo launchers. The rear deck was also slanted downwards towards the ocean, and a boiler was removed, which reduced her top speed to just 29 and a half knots. She'd be handed over to the U.S. Navy in 1945 to 1947 without any armament at all, and was used to transport uh, Japanese troops and POWs from basically the mainland of China to Japan or from other places in the Pacific to back to Japan. She was then transferred over to the Republic of China and the Navy there for use. And she was based in Tsingtao from 1947 until the fall of the city to communist forces during the Chinese Civil War. After that, uh, she transferred from Tsingtao to the naval, various naval bases in Taiwan. She served with the Taiwan Navy or the Republic of China Navy until 1960 when she was finally scrapped. In terms of the in-game playstyle, Shen Yang is about as far from Minikaze's playstyle as one could possibly get. In fact, I would really put this ship as basically a Mutsuki. Uh, I, that, that's kind of the same playstyle. I mean, we have the same torpedo configuration, although uh, Mutsuki certainly has less, uh, you know, less guns. Two less guns, in fact. Um, her lower torpedo range of just 6.4 kilometers combined with the higher detection range of 5.7 kilometers over the 5.453-ish of the, the Minikaze Kamikaze Fujin trio. Uh, well, I guess Quadro? Quattro? Because <laughs> there's a Kamikaze R in there. Um, you just, you have also have a less flexible torpedo armament with the 2x3 versus 3x2. Uh, the two triple launchers just aren't as flexible, as well as having deep water torpedoes that don't hit enemy destroyers. And there's a lot of... <laughs> you really can't play the ship as an effective torpedo boat. It falls into the same problems that Mutsuki has, and that's uh, that can be really, really frustrating to play. In fact, I've I've found this so far to be one of the most frustrating ships I've ever had to play. Certainly at Tier 4, when you have ships like Clemson, which is the quintessential seal clubber, and uh, Isakaze, which is also a pretty strong ship still, even after the nerfs. And uh, those, those two ships are actually credible threats. Plus, this ship is going to run into Kamikaze, Minikaze, Fujin, and Kamikaze R all the time, so... Really, the only advantage the ship has over those, it seems to me, is in the rate of fire department on the main battery. And that's thanks to having U.S. sourced 5-inch 51 caliber Mark 7 guns. Still have a 6.5 second reload time, although that's a far cry from the 10 seconds on Kamikaze, Fujin, Kamikaze R, and Minikaze. And gun configuration, though, is, is pretty solid. You've got three guns that face forward, and we'll see that a lot in the battle video. And then you've got one that faces to the rear, which is uh, almost useless. <laughs> almost. I mean, it's, it's got decent arcs, but quite honestly, uh, you could use three of them, charge torp torp uh, enemy battleships when you get the chance to do that. Um, and... and, and uh, that's going to be about the most effective way to play the ship. Unfortunately, it also suffers from 
the same problem with torpedo arcs as Kamikaze, Minikaze, Fujin, and Kamikaze are, in that you really have to expose a large part of the ship's broadside to, to use the torpedoes effectively, and you lose half of the arc when you fire one set of torpedoes. And we'll see that again in the battle. So overall, it, its in-game play style is, is very reminiscent of U.S. destroyers, where you're going to rely heavily on the smoke to, uh, you know, hide you and to engage enemy ships. Unfortunately, the gun accuracy is not very high, and so it's not exactly the most effective ship in that regard. So we're going to we're going to show you a battle video, but we first we've got to sh look at some stats. In terms of stats, she has 10,600 hit points, which is less than the uh Minikaze Kamikaze Fujin uh Kamikaze R Quattro. <laughs> um up to 14 millimeters of armor. Woo! Still a tin can. Main battery consists of four 5-inch, 51 caliber Mark 7 guns. They have a 9.7 kilometer firing range, 6.5 second reload time, 12 second 180 degree turn time, 88 meter dispersion, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you'll see it in game. Like, hitting destroyers with these guns is very difficult. 1800 HE shell damage maxed out, 4% fire chance. AP shells do 2,200 damage, 9.7 kilometer range, as I said. Shell velocity is actually quite high at almost 1,000 meters per second for both AP and HE. So, pretty good there. Torpedoes. We have two triple torpedo tube launchers. They have a 6.4 kilometer range, 64 knot speed, 11,733 damage, and a 1.1 kilometer detection range. Hmm. All right. Well, that doesn't seem too bad, if, especially if I had, you know, 5.2 kilometer detection range. The <laughs> AA guns. Um, the ship, interestingly enough, comes equipped with uh, four single 20 millimeter Orlikans that do 14 DPS at two kilometers. Not exactly a whole lot to write home about, but interesting that we have a tier four ship with 20 millimeter Orlikans on it. And max speed of an A historical 41 knots, turning circle radius 550 meters, 2.8 second rudder shift time. So at least the ship is very fast and very maneuverable, especially with the speed boost consumable on, as well as the speed flag, which I think we actually have on. So that means that the top speed is going to be 39 knots without. Let's go ahead and remove it. I'm pretty sure it's 39. And yep. And detection range, and this is this is the the confusion that I have right now. now. This ship has no extra mast height associated with it compared to the Minikaze, Kamikaze, Fujin, Kamikaze R, but we have a 5.7 kilometer detection range because reasons, I guess. I don't know. Um, this is by far one of the the biggest disadvantages of the ship, especially since that 5.7 kilometer detection range requires you to have concealment expert on your captain. That means by the time you hit tier four, you're probably going to be in the eight to nine, ten uh, point range for the captain skills. And this ship really doesn't come into its own until you get that 10th captain skill and have the ability to get concealment expert. That means you're going to be dealing with a 6.4 kilometer detection range uh, or 6.3-ish kilometer detection range, <laughs> which, by the way, is your, your torpedo range. Huh, wargaming, why? 2.8 kilometer detection range by air. All right, let's look at the upgrades. So in the first upgrade slot, still running main armaments mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes getting incapacitated as well as a 50% increase in the amount of hit points that they have and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them if they do get incapacitated. The only other option at this uh, first upgrade slot that I would consider is Magazine Mod 1 for the 70% reduction in the chance of your ship's magazine getting detonated. If you have a whole bunch of detonation flags, this upgrade is basically useless. If you don't, this is a good option to replace them. 
In the second slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the chance of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair your engines. The only other one that I would consider here is Steering Gears Mod 1, which is the same as Propulsion Mod 1, except for it applies to the steering gears instead of your engines. And really, the difference between these two comes down to personal preference. With Last Stand... Uh, you're still going to be able to move forward. You're still going to be able to steer. However, I personally find the slow crawl away speed of last stand to be a bigger deterrence and a bigger hindrance, a much larger pain to deal with than the slower rudder shift time. At least with a slower rudder shift time, I can still speed away. So that's why I run Propulsion Systems Mod 1. Nothing really interesting to talk about in consumables, so we'll go dive right on into that battle video. Alright, so Shenyang, like I said, is best played kind of like a U.S. destroyer, in that we are going to end up using our smoke quite a lot to smoke up and to engage targets with our main battery. And our torpedoes, you're limited to situations in which a ship is really traveling towards you because of the short detection, or sorry, because of the short range of the torpedoes and the large detection range of the ship itself. Now here we are in the map Solomon Islands. This match is a tier four, tier five fight which is extremely common, and there is already at least one Kamikaze R in the match, it's, it's at least on my team, uh, you're going to see them a lot, and it, the, the differences between the two ships are going to be rather large, and it's going to be very frustrating to deal with. But uh, like I said, we're going to talk about some situations in which we can use our torpedoes. Now this match is, uh, this is a, a very large match for a tier 4 match. This is a high damage match for a tier 4 match and we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about the situations that got us into that high of a damage in this match as this match goes on. So we're going to head up to sea. This is a very popular area for most teams to go. So I found that most teams like to go to BC as opposed to A. I'm not entirely sure the reasoning for that but I, I suspect a large part of it has to do with the fact that um, generally speaking, the northern team gets to the sea cap first, has this island here to kind of hover around, and um, the other team can kind of pick and choose who they want to engage as they come around the end of the island. A cap doesn't necessarily work out that well, but uh, anyway, you can see here, <laughs> talking in the chat about, uh, you know, the, the really rather lackluster opinion I have of this ship, but... The other thing that stinks about tier four fights is the tier four, tier five fights is that you're all, if you're going to run into carriers, there's almost always two of them. In fact, out of the handful of games that I played in this ship, every single one of them had a bunch of carriers in them. <laughs> I don't think there, I'm trying to think if there was one that had only one carrier in them. I don't know. There you can see our torpedoes. We, we launched a set and we lost basically half. Generally speaking, and the reason why I launch these torpedoes, it has to do with the fact that, generally speaking, you're going to run into at least one cruiser or battleship that has come up this way, and generally speaking, that's about the area where they would need to, be, you know, the torpedoes would need to be traveling to hit. But as you can see, their team has basically abandoned the sea cap. Uh, the other interesting thing is that this match only has two destroyers in it, a Mutsuki and another Shen Yang, both of which are down at A, dealing with my Kamikaze R, which is superior, in my opinion, to both of those. So, uh, we've got this perfect opportunity here. You can see there's this big opening at the edge of the map that is kind of sort of being closed off by the, the Julio, and uh, Murmansk is starting to come around. The nice part about Murmansk is Murmansk is soft enough that uh, push comes to shove, we can really, uh, <laughs> we, we don't have to worry too much about dealing with Murmansk. So Murmansk, Julio, those two ships are coming to kind of deal with me, for lack of a better phrase. And you can see I'm launching these torpedoes well ahead of, you know, them being in range. And that's because both of these ships are actually going to be coming into range uh, at, at about the same time. 
and their carriers are focused very heavily on the other thing you can see here I'm sailing away from the Murmansk. We've only got 5.7 kilometer detection range. I'm trying to keep at the max range that I possibly can to uh, minimize the chances of me getting detected going over here. Now, look at this. We managed to get one torpedo hit on the Julio Cesare, which is going to cause flooding. And the Julio is pushing me into the edge of this map. And so 13 seconds here before we get our torpedoes up. Man, I just don't know if we're going to get lucky or if he's just not, we're going to end up getting detected. I just have this feeling. And we're at the edge of the map. <laughs> he's looking away. And you can see, watch what, you can see how, it, that really is annoying how, how much of the, uh, the torpedo arc disappears. But, okay, so now we're going to start using our guns. Up until now, we've done nothing but use torpedoes. This Julio Cesare is flooding out still from the first set of torpedoes I launched. Or sorry, second set of torpedoes I launched. We now have the third set out. And I don't know, are we going to get another torpedo hit? Yes, we are. Boom, down he goes. We're going to get lucky with the Murmansk. I don't know, but since we're in the smoke, we're just going to continue to engage. I was hoping... Ah, the torpedoes ran out of steam. Had the torpedoes had that 7 kilometer range, there's a pretty good likelihood that we would have gotten ourselves a Murmansk in there, as well as a potential double strike. Well, we're going to take advantage of the fact that uh, their whole team is elsewhere, and oh, hey, look, by the way, <laughs> here's their carriers. So, so far you've seen a fairly healthy use of the torpedoes. Not a whole lot of use of anything else. Now, of course, we've got aircraft coming in. Oh, come on, go away, dive bomber. This Bogue knows he's being detected, and I, I know those are his aircraft, so it wasn't terribly surprising that he would come looking for me. What is surprising is how long and how close I managed to get before uh, actually getting detected. So, Murmansk is still an issue. Really was hoping that they would be able to... Uh, take out this Murmansk soon, but it appears that my team is is a bit preoccupied at the moment. So the Bogue, we launched the torpedo, and you can see there I was uh, nowhere near that island, however, oop, there's a Citadel hit with HE by the way, and because of that we're going to go ahead and use AP. Maybe we'll get lucky and get some Citadel hits, or we'll just overpen and, oh yeah, by the way, totally forgot that uh, I don't have I don't have any spotting of these ships. However, this Murmansk, being where he's at, I really need to get rid of him as fast as I can. Still have AP loaded, still over penning for days. Oh, incoming torpedo bombers, so we'll talk about torpedo bomber avoidance here. So the key to avoiding torpedo bombers is to slam on the brakes and turn into them as soon as you see them straighten out for their launch. We're getting a poked a little bit here by the uh, getting poked a little bit by the uh, Bogue's single five-inch gun mount on the back. By the way, that single five-inch gun mount is the gun mount. Well, but it wasn't on Bogue. It was on a Casablanca class. Oh, there's four Citadels for 8,800 damage on the uh, the USS White Plains. They actually detonated the. Uh, Oops, slammed on our brakes there in time to avoid the a incoming AP from the Congo. Anyway, that 5-inch uh, gun mount on the Casablanca has actually detonated the Ch Chokai. That was on the USS White Plains. Um, 3,000 hit points left. Oh, really thought somebody was going to get it. Oop, there's a dev strike on the Bogue, and there's a double strike with the Langley. Well, that was uh, a very large... <laughs> Increase in the amount of damage that we have done in this match. We are up to 92,470 damage. And, uh, you know, we just saw an opening and we exploited it there. And you saw that I was using AP against two these two carriers. The Bogue and the Langley both have uh, pretty soft armor overall. Oop, Congo is trying to engage us, so we'll slow down and turn in. We're at a far enough range that, uh, one, we can't engage the Congo, but even if we could, he can't really effectively engage us with his guns because we, uh, we can avoid quite easily. And in the midst of all of this, we've had our AA going crazy this entire time. Zero 
damage or zero aircraft is shot down. Oh, all right. Well, we just basically have taken the opportunity to maximize the, the opening that we saw. Oh, there's an unusually tight cluster of shells from the, the ship. Um, so maximizing your openings there is really the key. But what I've found is, is that this ship doesn't even really effectively maximize its damage potential, even with that. And the reason why I say that is quite simple. The the, the amount of damage that the ship can do with guns is, is, is adequate. It really is adequate. It's not terrible. It's not great either. But uh, the torpedo range is really the biggest limiting factor. And then the relatively high concealment range compared to a ship like the Minikaze, which is the same hole form. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's just interesting. I, I don't know. I, you don't get the same advantages as the Minikaze, <clears throat> but your next r closest rival is the... Yep, missed again. Your next closest rival is the Clemson, and the Clemson is a much better destroyer because it just flat out will out-DPS you with those uh, four-inch gun mounts. And then the Nicholas which is a tier higher, you will outspot the Nicholas. However, the Nicholas's gun rate of fire with the 5-inch 38s when fully upgraded will significantly outpace this. And it uses the same 5-inch 51 uh, guns, if I remember correctly, as this ship. So quite honestly, you're, you're really not seeing much of an advantage here by going to this. Oh, there we crossed over the 100,000 mark. Three kills. This is a fantastic game for a tier 4 ship. Um, but at this point, you can see the folly of this ship. This this Congo is 5.7 kilometers away. Even if I wanted to engage him with, with torpedoes, uh, he would be out of range of the torpedoes by the time that they ran out of steam. He's low enough on hit points. I don't want to do that anyway, but... Uh, you, you know, we don't have enough detection range to get to the point where I could actually launch the torpedoes at a fleeing ship like this. And so there's a... Oop, man, you missed again. There's the, the, an element of frustration to deal with there. So 104,618 damage. I'm really, 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 really hoping that I can get to at least 105,000. Not because of anything other than just because it would be fun to get to 105,000, but... I don't know. We got we got a cap to make. We're about to run them out of points. They've only got two ships left. Interestingly enough, one of them is a Mutsuki. Uh, that that ship was frustrating too, but <laughs> at least its torpedoes did a lot of damage when they hit home, and the ship is relatively stealthy so that you can actually get away with it. <laughs> this ship, not so much. Uh, overall, you know, like I said. The ship relies a lot more on its guns than uh, other Tier 4 uh, torpedo-focused lines are going to be. Oh, and our Julio decides that the Kaiser is worth suiciding into. Or the Kaiser <laughs> made it impossible for the Julio to take any other action. But, uh-oh. Uh -oh. We got Banzai Rush there from the... Uh, I think that was the Julio. So we'll... We'll join in here, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't get this Mutsuki off this Texas here. And I'll be kind of curious to see what ends up happening with the, the end of this, because I don't think that we killed the Mutsuki, and I'm pretty sure we didn't run them out of points, but I could be wrong. I don't, I don't quite remember what all happened at the end of this. But anyway, you know, relies heavily on its gun, so Shen Yang re relies heavily on her guns, and her torpedo armament is kind of, eh, it's not exact. Oh, we did run them out of points, but look at the, that gun accuracy. What the heck? Anywho, overall, I'm not a huge fan of this ship. I mean, I got better as I played it more and more, but it just, I don't know. 104,618 damage, three kills, two caps, 11 citadels, a double strike, and a dev strike. 1,510 base XP. And 360,000 potential damage. Not too bad overall, but anyway, not a huge fan of this ship. Uh, that's been kind of a repeating theme amongst the low-tier Pan-Asian destroyers. Hopefully this starts to improve here with the Janeway. 
at the next tier. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.